Hi, my name is Joanna and I'm a staff nurse in the emergency department of Sultan Qaboos University Hospital. Today, I'm going to discuss about the Canadian Triage Equity Scale and how to ensure that patient's traffic is managed and appropriate emergency care is rendered in a timely manner. Triage is a system within emergency department where incoming patients are prioritized based on the severity of their conditions using the CTAS or Canadian Triage Equity Scale. SKUH adopted the Canadian Triage Equity Scale or CTAS to properly classify patients into five categories or level of urgencies. The CTAS triage process is as follows. First, patients arrives at emergency department and the triage nurse conducts a critical look or rapid visual assessment. Second, patient is screened for infectious disease, asks for the presenting complaint including subjective and objective assessment, and application of the first and second modifiers. Third, the triage nurse assigns a CETAS category to the patient, directs either to the treatment area or waiting room as appropriate. Finally, if the patient is in the waiting room, triage nurse facilitates physician's orders and is reassessed accordingly until decision to discharge or refers to appropriate specialty for further management and admission is made by the physician. CETAS categories are as follows. Category 1 is the resuscitation level. These are the patients whose conditions are threat to life or limb and requires aggressive intervention. Examples of this are cardiac or respiratory arrest, major trauma in shock, altered level of consciousness with GCS of 3 to 9, and severe respiratory distress. These patients are directly sent to the ER to be attended by a doctor and a team of nurses. Category 2 is the emergent level. These are the conditions that have potential threat to life or limb that require rapid intervention by the healthcare team. These are the patients who come with moderate respiratory distress, patients suspected of stroke or heart attack, symptomatic hypertension with systolic blood pressure of more than 220 and diastolic blood pressure of more than 130, severe central pain in the chest, head, and abdomen, and signs and symptoms of infection for the immunocompromised patients. Category 3 is the urgent level. These are the conditions that could potentially progress to a serious problem if left untreated such as mild respiratory distress, non-symptomatic hypertension, mild dehydration due to uncontrolled vomiting or diarrhea, moderate pain in the abdomen, moderate headache, or conditions associated with significant discomfort and can affect the ability to function at work or in activities of daily living. These patients can be directed to the waiting room and should be regularly reassessed for any deterioration. Category 4 is the less urgent level. This applies to conditions that would benefit from simple interventions such as administration of oral or intramuscular analgesia for mild pain, commencement of oral antibiotic therapies for mild systemic infections such as UTI or URTI, simple procedures like suturing for minor lacerations, immobilization of fractured limbs, and age-related conditions such as constipation in the elderly and chronic confusion without changes from the usual state. Category 5 is the non-urgent level. It refers to any condition where investigations and interventions can be delayed or even referred to other related specialty of the hospital or other healthcare facilities. Cases like mild diarrhea without signs of dehydration, minor bites, dressing change or medication requests. For some patients, assigning CETAS levels can be determined quickly by the critical first look or rapid visual assessment. But in most cases, more information is needed to determine the CETAS level. CETAS provides first order and second order modifiers. These modifiers provide additional equity to the presenting complaint and help assign the appropriate CETAS level. First order modifier includes respiratory distress, hemodynamic stability, level of consciousness, temperature, pain severity, bleeding disorder, mechanism of injury. Second-order modifiers are limited to a specific number of complaints 
and may only be required to supplement the first order modifiers. This is to ensure that the patient is assigned an appropriate acuity score. This includes blood glucose level, degree of dehydration, and degree of blood pressure or hypertension in adults. Before ending this video, I would like to emphasize the following points. Triage nurses are the forefront of the emergency department to provide emergency care that is due for the patient. In the event that beds are full, some form of treatment is started at the triage level until the bed inside the emergency department becomes available. Patients waiting to be seen by the definitive care provider are reassessed based on their triage acuity. Pediatric population uses the same triage classification but employs a different method of assessment. Anatomical and physiological psychosocial differences and special circumstances are considered in assigning triage level scores. Emergency department nurses undergo CETAS training with the certified CETAS trained instructors. Triage demands excellent public relations skills, communication skills, critical thinking skills, multitasking mind and senses, and overall knowledge of the patient's current condition in order to jumpstart the treatment they need. Patients of SQUH should have the confidence that the emergency department team is working hard to deliver quality and timely emergency care. This is the end of my video. Thanks for watching.